Welcome back to another episode of the North Star Takes Podcast. I'm Bailey Paulicki. He's Jacob Liberta. We're a Minnesota sports podcast, so if you're a Minnesota sports fan, especially a Minnesota Timberwolves fan, please hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. Uh, Liberta, the Wolves have lost their last two games, albeit against very good playoff teams in the Western Conference, the Dallas Mavericks, who are more than likely going to end up being the fifth seed, maybe even battle it out for the fourth seed with Utah. And, of course, the Phoenix Suns, who are the best team in the NBA this season, the Wolves, you know, hung in the game for the most part, but, it, you know, Phoenix was just too good in the fourth quarter. The Wolves couldn't hit any shots. Um, and the Suns just started to pull away, and they do what good teams do. And, you know, when you know you can win, I mean, you could just – I was at the game, and I'm sure on TV you could see it too. They just – they kind of had this look like they know exactly what they're doing. I mean, they were getting all these open looks for Michael Bridges, uh, Landry Shamit, Devin Booker was nailing shots. DeAndre Ayton had freaking 35 points. You know, it helps the Cat was in foul trouble, but – um, rather than talking about all the negatives, I guess, from this two game mini two game losing streak here, let's talk about some stuff the Wolves can learn from playing these playoff type games as we're coming down the stretch here, getting a little bit of a taste of maybe what the playoffs will bring. So what do you think are some things the Wolves can learn from uh, this tough stretch? Yeah, you know, I wouldn't even say these are just playoff teams. Like it's, these are some of the best teams right now in the NBA between the Suns and the Mavericks have been super hot. And then the Celtics too coming up here. Like yeah. this, this is a lot of quality competition. You're just taking it up a notch and you can take a whole lot away from it, to be honest, when you're this close to the playoffs, because it'll be just so fresh in your mind. And really it's, it's going to really test your mettle and basically be an indicator as far as how, how much of a notch we have to climb really, because yeah. I don't think, I think there's a difference between winning games against the lesser teams or even just the middle of the road, average mediocre teams and winning against the best competition in the league and the world. So I, I think it's probably going to tell us that you got to keep your foot on the gas the whole game. And I know they, they do that. They get up for these games when they play these good teams, but like we had a good first half against the Suns, but then it kind of fell apart once you got to the fourth quarter. Cause like you said, this is a this team knows how to win now. And mm-hmm. they obviously made the NBA finals last year, came close to winning a championship and they're definitely the favorites going into this this playoffs but yeah i i would say this is gonna basically teach us how to play a full 60 minutes or 60 minutes when i was in football 48 minutes <laughs> excuse me yeah 48 minutes and we're just talking about the draft us uh, yeah but 48 <laughs> minutes and then you get to the point where it's like you know how to really get it done at the end of the game especially just yeah. because that's that's what you're gonna have to learn how to do if you're gonna put together multiple wins in a playoff series potentially advance so I think that's probably the biggest thing to take away from this is how to uh, sustain over a whole game. That includes not getting in foul trouble either like Cat did. Yeah, and granted the refs let that game get out of control. And yeah. I don't understand how this happens so much, especially at Target Center. But we're not going to dig into the refs because, I mean, the Wolves deserve to lose that game. Phoenix definitely deserved to win that game with how they played in the fourth. But, yeah, I think a, a main thing the Wolves can take away from this too is against these better teams, at the end of the game, you really need your superstars to take over. Yes. In that in that Mavs game, uh, Cat was trying to take over a little bit. So so was Ant, but neither one like truly asserted themselves. Especially at the end of the game, the Wolves didn't really score much uh, towards the end of the game. Cat had that posterized dunk on Luca, but other than that, they didn't get much offense. And the fourth quarter against the Suns too, they just kind of lacked an identity in terms of who they're going to run the offense through. I mean, D'Lo had a really rough shooting night. Uh, Ant missed a lot of layups. He missed a lot of shots at the rim. And he wasn't super aggressive in the fourth quarter, and Cat was in foul trouble all night. So he was basically, you know, playing on his heels, not wanting to pick up his sixth foul. So it's tough when you can't really get any of those three going down the stretch. You know, sometimes you'll have D'Lo just take over in the fourth. He'll get super hot. Or if Cat's got the hot hand, you just keep feeding him the ball. But we haven't really had that. And you, we've kind of – they've been able to balance it out, like letting the bench players contribute a lot too against some of these poor teams that can't really defend anybody on the Wolves roster. Yeah. But um, when it comes to these better teams that can actually play defense and, you know, obviously are good offensive teams as well, I think the Wolves really need to emphasize, all right, who do we want, you know, to go through down the stretch? Do we want it to be Ant? Do we want it to be Cat? Do we want it to be D'Lo? And obviously they can mix and match, but they got to start running some sets that get these guys looks rather than just kind of, keep moving the ball around, but not really finding an open shot. The shot clock's winding down and we have to chuck something up. So I think it's, you know, against these better teams, you really need your superstars to be the ones to step up and really take over the game for you. Granted, I love the way our bench has been playing and obviously we're missing Jaden McDaniels, which is a huge factor. We probably would have beaten the Mavs, honestly, if we had them, but um, yeah, I think the superstars just need to bear a little more responsibility here. 
Yeah, and I think we should be able to pick ourselves up more than that. Like, it shouldn't be that make or break for us winning and losing games if one bench player is out. Albeit, like, McDaniels is a good player to his credit, yeah. but at the same time, it's like everybody usually has at least somebody out, so we should be able to overcome that. And and we have uh, ever since he got hurt, really, until the last couple games. But yeah. I I think another thing to add, too, between the uh, superstar power and getting down to end-of-game situations and them basically taking over, I think that's really when you got to bring – crisp offensive execution because that's one of the other teams especially like the suns you know they're they're gonna bring it at the end they're gonna uh take it to another level because they know what it takes and their defense mm-hmm. is gonna be heightened and they're one of the better defensive teams in the league so i think when you got when you got them basically putting on the clamps i think you have to be almost flawless offensively i think this team can be because mm-hmm. i think one of the most potent offensive attacks in the league like i think as far as just raw production and scoring points and things like that. The Wolves are number one. I know that I believe it's Phoenix who actually is number one in shooting percentage, but at the same time, I feel like we got the guys and the talent to do it, but it's just, you, you got to be really fine at the end. And yeah, it, it just depends on whose night it is. Like truthfully, I'm okay with riding the hot hand, whoever it might be, whether it be D low cat or ant. I think they all have the ability to take over a game. It's just in like yeah. situations like last, last night against the, or against the Suns. It's just, I think that's where probably Ant's got to take over. He's just got to recognize mm-hmm. the situation that D'Lo <laughs> couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. And then you got Cat sitting on the bench because he has five fouls. So, yeah. basically, that's when I think Ant's got to be able to penetrate and get buckets at the rim, albeit I know he's missing those shots. And then once you get him to do that, then you get a more space in your three-point shot, and then you can really bring the team back in the game. So, I think that's what it comes down to. But, again, it's another young factor where you're learning how to win. Yeah, for sure. And I love what Chris Finch said after the game, basically making a comment like, He'd love to see Ant dunk more. He thinks he's getting too cute going to the rim. Sure. And I agree with that. Like people are like, well, Ant's, you know, his liftoff doesn't look the same. And I was like, I was at the game. Like he looks like he can still jump out of the gym. I think this guy can still throw down dunks. Like even if his knee's not at hundred percent. So, I mean, all it takes is a dunk or two like that. And target center is erupting and they have yes. all the momentum back on their side. So like you said, more so Ant just recognizing the moment and, you know, if you can throw down a dunk like that, you know, get the whole building energized, get your teammates energized. Maybe you can get a couple steals, stuff like that. Because I was the Wolves were just, you know, they really just, especially like about midway through the fourth quarter there against the Suns, they really just needed like one play to just kind of flip the momentum back on their side. Yep. And they never really got that. So, totally. I mean, it's it's looking like now the seven seed's probably really likely. We, we snuck up to that six seed very momentarily, but all of a sudden these two losses have us a game and a half behind the Nuggets again. So, I mean, Nuggets have a pretty easy schedule from here on out. We still have a few tough games left before it gets a little easier to finish out the season. Um, it's really looking like we're on a crash course to play the Clippers in that first play-in game. And then if you can beat them, which it, it's really not looking like Paul George is going to be back unless something changes here. Um, you're going to be playing a Clippers team without PG and Kawhi. If you can beat them, you're, you're going to have Memphis waiting for you as a, as a two seed because Golden State's going to be without Steph here for – a little while and now John Morant is also hurt for the Grizzlies. Yep, exactly. I think that's a matchup. Timberwolves fans are probably cautiously pen as the really what we want in the first round if we can make it out of that play in scenario because I think that's the biggest thing we want to get in the top six so you don't even have to worry about that. Or if yep. it does come down to it, it might honestly be optimal if you can guarantee yourself you're going to win that play in game. So then again, Memphis, who's just as inexperienced as us when it comes to the playoffs, I realized they were in it last year because they. Uh, won those two play-in games and got in as the eight and lost in the first round there to Utah. But still, I mean, they were in it, but it was just a few games. So it's about as right. much as D'Lo and Cat have had, basically. So I think that's most optimal. But again, you kind of play with fire when you're like, oh, we can put, we can get into the play-in and be fine because, mm-hmm. I mean, a winner take all and it can happen. So that scares me. But as long as we can win that game, a seven is just fine with me. Yeah, and like – you can look at it two different ways. Like Memphis rebounds really well, so that would be tough for us. And that, that was – I mean, the rebounds were about even with Phoenix, but there was a few possessions where they got like three rebounds off of misses and were able to get a putback. It's, it, those are killer-type possessions. And yeah. so I think, you know, Memphis and Phoenix, that would be the tough part is being able to rebound given how small we are. Golden yeah. State, you could rebound all over if they got the shooting, you know. So it's, it's pick your poison. And at this point, like you said, I'd, I think I'd rather just take Memphis. Yeah, cautiously optimistic about the matchup. You, you, you probably can't expect a series win either, although it'd be nice. But um, at least I think we'd be able to make it a series, at least win a couple games. I'd love to push it to six at least, yeah. Yes, get these guys some true playoff experience. Because I feel like if you go in and get swept by the Suns in four games, then, I mean, what are you really taking away from that playoff series going into next year? So, exactly. Um, yeah, I think the goal, I mean – 
the six seed would still be great. I just think it's going to be really hard to get there at this point. And if you can get that seven, just make sure you take care of business against the Clippers. Uh, let them and the Lakers battle it out for that eight seed, which yes. would honestly be kind of a good game, even though it'd probably be a crappy game at the same time. I think um, the NBA wants that. You're probably right. They want the two LA teams battling to get in the playoffs for all the marbles. Yeah. Which, yeah, maybe maybe the Wolves would get some decent refing at home for once. But who knows? <laughs> yeah. Um, any other final thoughts from you as we uh, are rapidly approaching the end of the regular season here? Yeah, I would say nothing's really changed with me as far as my outlook on the Wolves. These have been two tough games against quality opponents, so it's just it is what it is. We didn't get just ran over from from the jump, so that's yeah. probably most important. And then we we had a chance to win both games. And I know I'm not a big fan of moral victories like those driving nuts after a certain period of time, but mm-hmm. with this team, I can be a little patient, especially how hot we've been since the All Star break. So it just you're gonna go go through it. It's going to be a game of runs and you're just learning how to win against teams that have a little bit more experience than you do in these situations. So we'll get there eventually. It's just not yet. Yeah, I agree. It's it's a building year. And as far as they can take this thing, I'm happy with it. So mm-hmm. you just got to enjoy the ride. And we, we yeah. knew going into this stretch, it was going to be difficult. And, you know, maybe they can beat the Mavs at home here on Friday and um, we'll feel a little bit different. You know, we'll feel more optimistic. I mean, I'm hope it'd be really nice to have another huge ant game here. Like, you know, a 40 point game or something from Ant before we get into the playoffs, just to re reassert his confidence, his aggressiveness. I think, I think he could really use that because Cat's obviously got the confidence rolling and oh, D yeah. just kind of a streaky player, but you know, he can turn it on when he needs it most. So he, he's got a level mindset. Yeah. For sure. So I think just getting Ant rolling a little bit more here before the playoffs is kind of something I'm looking toward, but. Totally. Um, definitely going to be a fun, fun stretch run down here to the end of the season and uh, certainly looking forward to them getting in the playoffs. So um, that's going to do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, feel free to give this video a like. Give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram and leave your comments below. What are your thoughts on the Wolves recent skid here in their tough stretch? Do you think this is preparing them well for the playoffs? And what are you looking forward to see down the stretch run of the season here? So. Until next time, thanks for watching.